Hello everyone. Today I am going to tell you the second part of NR. Initial steps of resuscitation. I have already covered the principle and changes and today I will tell you the details of initial steps. This is the NR algorithm. So here at the top you can see these three things we have to do before the birth of the baby. So what are these three things or sometime it can be asked in the viva also or in the form of MCQ. So during this session I will also show you the some of the MCQs related to this topic. So what are the three things should be done during the pre resuscitation time or before the delivery. So antenatal counseling first thing and assessment of the risk factor then team briefing then equipment should be checked before birth of the baby. So these are the three things before birth. So in antenatal counseling and assessment of the risk factors. So to know the risk factors we should ask the four things to the obstetrician before the birth of the baby. So what are these four things? First is what is the expected gestation age of the baby? Is the amniotic fluid clear or not? Are there any additional risk factors in the mother? What is our umbilical cord management plan? And after assessing the risk factors and after asking these four things, we should do the antenatal counseling of the relatives and if possible of the mother and father. What are the risk factors which will increase that baby will require the neonatal resuscitation? If the mother is having hypertension, diabetes, multiple gestation and emergency cesarean delivery is there. If the preterm less than 37 week or postterm more than 42. If mother is having poly or oligohydramnios, IUGR is there, fetal malformation. No antenatal care was taken by the mother. If intrapartum bleeding or assistant delivery, chorioamnionitis, breach or any other abnormal presentation. If the general anesthesia is given to the mother or opioid administration, shoulder dystocia, meconomistin like a, or prolapse umbilical cord or abduction placenta. Various risk factors can lead to the requirement of neonatal resuscitation. At least one qualified individual should be available at the time of birth. So at least one. Whenever there is a risk factor, at least two qualified individual, example pediatrician or neonatologist should be there to handle the baby. Now team briefing. This is the second prerequisite before the birth. So in team briefing, first we should identify the team leader. And also we should know what can be the complication can occur after birth and we should plan the team response. We should distribute the task between the all the team members. We should also identify who will document the events when it will occur. Example, Abgar is score at what time baby will uh, showing the improvement sign and up to what steps we have to go for resuscitation. So all these things should be documented. We should also check the equipments and also all the sizes of mass, catheter, everything should be available. And if any other help will be required, then who will call for the additional help? So we have to divide the task in the form of that who will do the uh, bag and mass ventilation, who will intubate the baby if it is needed, who will give the chest compression if required, who will go for the cannulation and umbilical catheterization and giving the adrenaline if required. All the equipment should be checked before birth. Example for the initial steps of resuscitation, pre-warmed three towels will be required, radiant warmer should be there, also shoulder roll should be there to keep the baby in position and also the suction catheter of the various size 8, 10, 12, 14 should be there. Suction machine either the portable or wall mounted and suction pressure should be set 
between 80 to 100 mmHg and if the patient will require the further steps of resuscitation then ambu bag with reservoir all the sizes of mask oxygen tubing and also the flow meter of free oxygen supply should be there and also the pulse oximeter to monitor the baby by spo2 ecg three lead ecg machine should be there and if intubation will be required then laryngoscope et of 2.53 3.54 all sizes should be there and laryngoscope with all sizes of blade should be there if intubation is failed and then laryngeal mask airway should also be there all the sizes of syringes 2 5 10 cc and nasogastric feeding tube will also be needed adrenaline injection pre-filled syringe with the adrenaline 1 is to 10 diluted should be there before resuscitation also umbilical uvc umbilical venous catheter should be there in case if uvc is not inserted then iv cannula adhesive should be there so all these equipment should be ready when we are going to resuscitate the baby so all the list of the equipment first we should prepare and all the equipment should be there now in the algorithm at the top you can see what are the three things should be done before birth which i have covered already now once the baby will be delivered after birth we have to ask the three things first term second tone then third is baby's breathing or crying so what are the three rapid evolution questions we have to ask and we have to assess when the baby will be delivered is the baby term having good tone breathing or crying or not after birth we have to rapidly ask these three questions term tone and crying so in term or preterm in this image you can see this baby is term while this baby is preterm term babies are having a smooth transition while the preterm baby because they are having the underdeveloped lung not having proper muscle strength cannot maintain the temperature they require the resuscitation then we have to check the tone as the term baby are having the flexed extremities while the preterm babies are having the poor muscle tone so having the extended extremities then we have to check the breathing or crying so we have to watch the chest movement if crying has started immediately after birth chest movements are there that means baby is breathing and having normal cry if you find that gasping respiration is there which is a series of deep single stead inspiration or if the baby is in apnea zero respiration is there that means baby requiring the resuscitation once the answer to all these three questions term tone crying is yes we will provide the routine newborn care so in routine newborn care baby will stay with the mother so these are the steps of routine care in this we have to keep the baby in skin to skin contact on the mother's chest baby should be covered with the warm blanket we have to gently dry the baby and drying will stimulate the baby and we have to position the head of the baby toward the one side to ensure the airway is open after one minute we have to clamp the coat so in this image you can see baby in prone position over the mother's chest and slightly over the abdomen and baby's head is turned toward the one side and also baby is covered with the another warm cloth after drying this will also stimulate the breastfeeding we have to assess the baby color breathing tone temperature if the baby is not maintaining color tone and breathing is also not smooth then we have to go for another intervention so 
during routine care also we have to evaluate the baby after every 30 seconds shortly after birth by this method known as breast crawl method in which we are keeping the baby in prone position between both the breast and turning the face toward the one side this method is known as breast crawl method it will initiate the breast feeding within half hour of normal delivery so it is very effective method to initiate the breast feeding as early as possible for all the babies who do not require any step of resuscitation we are only providing routine newborn care cord clamping should be delayed at least for 1 minute if the answer to any one of these three things term tone crying or breathing is no then we have to start the initial steps of resuscitation we generally use the term a for the initial steps of resuscitation so this is the step a to maintain the airway a for airway so in this algorithm you can see the initial steps if the answer to any one of these three is no so what will be the sequence of initial steps of resuscitation so this is the sequence these are the five initial steps first we have to provide the warm by keeping the baby in radiant warmer second step is position the head sniffing dog position then we have to clear the airway by suctioning oral cavity first then nose then we have to dry the baby after that we have to stimulate the baby if it is required then again we have to reposition so first step is provide the warm before birth we should own the radiant warmer and before birth we can keep on air mode so the temperature for the air mode between 28 to 30 degree centigrade and once the baby will be delivered once you have completed the initial steps then skin mode should be started and the set temperature for skin mode between 36.5 to 37.5 should be set then keep the baby in sniffing dog position by putting the shoulder roll of at least 1 inch length not more than this not less than this and after keeping the shoulder roll you will see in this image that upper airway and larynx and trachea in same line while in hyper extension this is not maintained while in flexion position it is also not maintained so by shoulder roll you have to keep the position sniffing do then you have to clear the airway first we have to clear the oral cavity then we have to clear the nose so you can easily remember m before n because if you will clear the nose first then whatever secretions are present in the oral cavity will be aspirated by the baby so to prevent the aspiration of oral content we should first suction the oral cavity then we have to dry the baby on again we have to reposition the baby if it is required then we will stimulate the baby so for stimulation we have to either flick the sole or we can rub the back three times so in this video i will show you all the five steps first keep under radiant warmer then put the shoulder roll under the shoulder for positioning the head in sniffing dog position then you have to suction the oral cavity first to clear the airway then nose and suction pressure 80 to 100 mmhg after that you have to dry the baby if you will dry the baby before suctioning then whatever secretion in oral cavity will be aspirated then reposition the baby then stimulate the baby by either rubbing the back or flicking the sole so these are the five initial steps so in mcq 
this can be asked what are the five initial steps of resuscitation so provide the warm position the head and neck clear the secretions dry up the baby and reposition and stimulate if necessary after doing the initial step we have to do the initial step as early as possible in less than 30 seconds and we have to assess the newborn's respiration to determine if the baby is responding to our initial step and this should not take more than 30 seconds so what will you evaluate you have to evaluate the heart rate respiratory rate you have to uh, see the spo2 of the baby and also three lead ecg so check the chest movement of the baby respiration has started or not then check the heart rate for heart rate we have to auscultate and in this image you can see keep the stethoscope in precordium and counts for 6 seconds then multiply it with 10 oxygenation by the pulse oximeter we have to check spo2 should be maintained according to the minutes of life and we should connect the 3 lead ecg so this is asked in the viva how to count the newborn's heartbeat during resuscitation so just we have to count for 6 seconds then multiply it with 10 or we can say counts for 6 seconds then just put the 0 behind the number of heartbeat so here in this image you can see this pulse oximeter with the sensor is attached to the right hand of hypothenar eminence so we have to measure the spo2 of right hand why we should connect the sensor of the pulse oximeter to the right hand because the blood supply to the right arm right hand is by the right arm branch from the aorta which is before the ductus open so the blood in the right arm is preductal and similar oxygen saturation is in the heart and brain so we are willing to assess the saturation which is reaching to the brain and heart so it is very important to assess the preductal spo2 if you will connect the sensor to the left arm or to the uh, legs then it is the blood in postductal so this postductal blood is reaches to the legs only while the saturation in heart and brain will be different which is preductal so always connect the sensor of the pulse oximeter to the right hand because preductal blood saturation should be monitored and whatever readings are given according to the minute of the life is the preductal spo2 so always we have to place the pulse oximeter sensor on the baby's right hand or we can keep even on the right wrist pulse oximetry may not function if the baby's heart rate is low or baby is having very poor perfusion so in this case we have to just determine the heart rate with cardiac monitor 3 lead ecg which is the preferred method so i have covered the first step step a to maintain the airway in other video i will cover the b c and d steps Thank you so much.